If you're interested in getting your big sweaty paws on Anthem, but are still unsure on some of the details about the game, in this video I'm hopefully going to enlighten you on some of the five things that you might have missed or misinterpreted about the upcoming release of Anthem. Now if you've been following the progression of Anthem and have been keeping up to the latest news that's been released about it, I'm sure you're all aware that there's four classes. Now these classes are referred to as javelins in the game of Anthem and these are the Ranger, the Colossus, the Storm and the Interceptor. Now if you're someone that does not like class based games and ability based games and don't like being shunted down a certain path and feeling like once you've selected a certain javelin you're gonna have to play all the way through it this is where I want to try and enlighten you now they have stated unlike games like destiny when you select the Titan for instance and you play all the way through it and you get your Titan very high level in order to do anything else it makes it very difficult because it means you've got to start all the way from the beginning again but in Anthem they're trying to do something different what they give you is an independent pilot level now this is your general character the person that's actually inside the javelin controlling it he has has an actual level now if you get him to level 50 it doesn't matter if you've played all that time getting him up to level 50 in the storm for example the second that you hop out of the storm and decide to go into the colossus you'll be the exact same pilot level so you can start working from there and you won't lose that much progress so if that's something that you're worried about hopefully that's cleared it up for you there now if you're somebody that doesn't actually mind class based systems but when they play you want to feel like you're different you you're playing for instance the ranger or the colossus different to how you're friends playing it and you want a way to be able to do that now in games like destiny i don't think they did this very well because of the way the skill trees were all built up it was very difficult to feel like you were playing say the sentinel for instance very differently to your teammate just because the skills didn't really differ that much but anthem does not have that problem at all in fact there's so much diversity in terms of how you can play each javelin let's take the colossus for example now each javelin has five values to them and three of which of those can be altered drastically now they all have a melee ability, an ordnance slot, an assault slot and a support slot and then finally an ultimate ability. Now the ordnance, assault and support can all be changed and differ depending on your playstyle so you can play how you want to play the game. Now let's take a look at the Colossuses a bit more in depth. So the Colossus for his high ordnance launcher has exposed to him the high explosive mortar, the burst mortar, the firewall mortar, the lightning coil and the shot coil. For the heavy assault launcher, he has the heavy cannon, the flamethrower, the flat cannon, the railgun and the acid spitter. That sounds really nasty, I would not like to be on the receiving end of that one. <laughs> And then finally, in his support slot, he has the taunt and the deflector pulse. Now, in the assault slot there, there's five different ways that you can customise and play with your Colossus. Now, just imagine the amount of variations and things you can do when you're mixing and matches things in your ordnance slot, your assault slot, and your support slot to play the game you really want to play it. This would mean that when you run into someone else's Colossus, you're going to most likely be playing a completely different way to their playing. But it gets better than that. Now the actual abilities themselves, for instance the Acid Spitter like I mentioned earlier, you can unlock different things for that Acid Spitter, so therefore if you unlock a legendary item for your Acid Spitter, it will then do even more effects or even different effects, therefore leading you to tailor your playstyle even more, so therefore you can diversify yourself from your teammates or anyone else in the world of Anthem, so you can really truly play the game how you want to play it and feel special and unique in the way that you're playing the game. And in terms of cosmetic customizations, I'm going to cover this in another video but there is a whole host of things you can do and so many different options in terms of customizing your javelin something that you might not have realized though is the fact that you can actually customize your javelin but the customization aspect of the game is not bound to the actual skill aspect of the game what i mean by this is for instance that acid spitter if you got one that really looked really cool on your wrist but you didn't necessarily like the abilities that it has you don't actually have that problem in anthem cosmetics are completely separate to actually ability based skills in the game so you can make your javelin look however you want and it doesn't matter when you get new gear or armor it's not going to alter the way that you look and now answering your next concern or the next thing that you might have been misled with if you're someone that's thinking okay yeah there's loads of customization on them for javelins but there's only four javelins what if i want to play as something else now yes it is a tall order really to be asking bioware for more than just the four but they have actually mentioned in a in a rapid fire interview they mentioned that that it's going to be four javelins at launch but potentially more to come in the future and you can see this by the way he says it here how many classes are there so there are four different uh, javelins at launch at launch at launch 
Javelins equals classes. It's a slightly inaccurate, but pretty good uh, uh, approximation. Why would he say at launch like that if there's not going to be any more released in the future? So this leads me to believe that definitely at some point in the future, we will be getting more Javelins to come. So if there's not one that satisfies your needs now, there might definitely be one later on. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. Something also very interesting that they mentioned in that interview was the fact that there might actually be potential to swap exosuits with other people in your party at some point on the course of Anthem's trajectory. Now, it isn't going to be at the start of the game, but he does mentioned in this interview when he's asked the question can you jump out of your suit and go into someone else's not at the moment but it might be something they're looking into in the future which is something really interesting and be really weird to be playing and then all of a sudden someone says hey come and jump in my colossus it's warm in here and then all of a sudden you're on a completely different path than you thought you was going to be at the start of the day can i get into another player's exosuit? Not at launch. But maybe later. Maybe later. So yes, something very interesting there. Now, if you've been looking into how the loot and the end game is gonna work in Anthem, you've definitely heard them dreaded words, random loot drops. Now, I don't want you to be completely misled here. They've actually mentioned something called legendary blueprint. And I imagine I'll have these for all the different ranks as well. Now, what these blueprints will do is, let's say, for instance, Jorah's Wrath, a known legendary weapon in the game, there will actually be a blueprint for that. How you acquire that blueprint, I imagine, is slightly easier than getting the weapon itself. Otherwise, you know, what would be the point? So there'll be a way to obtain that blueprint that might be from completing a legendary contract, completing a stronghold. You might be able to get it even as a random drop itself. But once you have got that blueprint, you'll then be able to craft your way to get it. And that will mean that once you've got it, you can continuously farm materials, get materials, something that you know how to do, so something you can definitely work towards, and start grinding towards getting that Jorah's Wrath. And also, when you get it, there'll be random rolls on the weapon, so it means that you can craft it as many times as you want to try and get the perfect roll. So don't be completely discouraged if you think this whole game is going to be random loot drops. There are ways of getting your favorite weapons, you're just gonna have to be a little bit more savvy about it and acquire the blueprints. Now, if you're someone that really likes stories within games and are looking at this game thinking it's always online, there's gonna be no story present in it, I really don't know if this game's for me. Now, I want you to start taking a look at who's actually making this game. Yes, there's the dreaded EA making the game, but also the people at the forefront of this game are a studio called BioWare. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? No damn well who I am. Who the fuck is that? Now, you may know who Bioware are, but you might not necessarily know any of their accomplishments. So I'm going to list off some of their games now, because Bioware are a studio that are absolutely invested in delivering rich story games. And these games are absolutely fantastic and have been praised heavily in the past for how detailed and immersive their stories are and just how involved they get you in the game. So if you are looking for someone with story and have been previously let down by games like Destiny, so you think, well, I like the look of that game, but when I played it, it felt empty and hollow. I really think that Bioware are going to focus on the story of this game and it's going to be a rich and diverse story that's really going to get you invested and keep you wanting to come in back playing and playing again because the world will be so diverse. Some of the games that they've made in the past are Star Wars The Old Republic, the Mass Effect series and also the Dragon Age series. All of these games have been incredible successes because of how rich their story is. So please do not write this game off because it's gonna be like all the other loot and shooter genre games. It's not, I really believe the story's gonna deliver. And if you don't believe me, there was actually a clip released yesterday onto IGN and they started to play through a 15 minute segment of the game. And you can just tell by watching this segment how rich the story is. You can hear the voice acting that's going into it and I'm already invested in this mission. I'm thinking what's going on? There's actually a story there as opposed to the old Dinklebot in Destiny. It seems like they've thought about it and it seems like they're working on it and I really think the story will be a success. Now I really hope I have cleared up some of the misconceptions that you have had about Anthem. If I have, please let me know down in the comments below. I'd really like to know what I've helped you with. But I'd like to thank you all very much for watching guys and have a great day.